Hi, this is Craig Brown, and I am the author of Stop Hiding, Start Healing. I hope you enjoy the following message. I share from my heart and my own personal experience how to deal with and discover how to be set free from life's challenges, dealing with the pain of the past, shame, guilt, depression, anxiety, life struggles, and addiction. The following message should be a word of encouragement to you. And I hope it is. At the close of the message, I'll tell you exactly how to get a copy of my new book, Stop Hiding, Start Healing. But in the meantime, enjoy the message. We're going to be talking about tonight, uh, removing our character defects. And I know you're really excited about that. I, I can tell. I can tell by the comments. I can tell by the, by, um, by the excitement that you're really excited to talk about your character defects. Um, but we have to. If we're, re- if we're going to get better, if we're going to heal, if we're going to be restored, if we're going to develop self-awareness, if we're going to get a, from a place of brokenness to, ha- to happiness, if we're ever going to be set free, if we're ever going to experience the true joy that the Lord has for you and I, all right, we've got to, first of all, acknowledge, be aware of, but also get rid of these character defects. We've got to do it. And um, we've been studying, we've just gone over quite a bit and studied principle number four and also step four. And then step four, that's the growth step. And now we're going to move from that. We're going to move on from that. But in that growth step of principle four and step four, we were talking about, you know, putting our inventory together and really digging down deep and drilling down on our past and certain people and the effect they had on us and the cause and, the, you know, the different experiences we've had in our life. And it's not that we have to dwell on that, but if it's there and you've never dealt with it before and it's wreaking havoc in your life and you have shame, guilt, and pain as a result of that, uh, the Bible tells us in Jeremiah that you cannot heal a wound by saying it's not there. And part of our character defects is we, that's one of our character defects. Oh, I'll just, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to ignore it. I'll, it'll go away. Eventually, uh, maybe I'll get to it at some point in time. Eh, well, I did that and it didn't work. Uh, it did not work. Uh, and it wasn't until myself, and you'll hear so many testimonies that celebrate recovery of the exact step. I, 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 and people say, I wish I'd have come there sooner. My goodness, I wouldn't have struggled so long. Because we get in, we drill down, we get into God's word, we get into the principles, we get into the steps, and they're specifically designed to pull back the layers of our life and our heart and reveal hurt, pain, and other issues and things that act as a catalyst that cause us to act out in certain ways to hide the struggle. And that's one of the care. that's many of the character defects cause us to do that, okay? So tonight we're just gonna drill down a little bit, uh, you know, deeper into what they are. I gave a list and a lot of my friends today were joking. I I posted this, matter of fact, this lesson, the handout is on one of the posts on the Facebook page. So if you wanna open up another tab, open up our Facebook page, go to that post, click on the um, PDF, you'll pull up the, uh, the teaching sheet. Uh, or you can get it later. It's up to you. But I handed it out to our sta- uh, our leaders today, and the comments were pretty funny because I listed 194 character defects. Okay, 194. Uh, I was just searching and researching and what have you, and I came across this list, and it's pretty pretty good. But it's my list. I, I have 194. Now you can add to that list if you want to. All right, go feel free. You may have one or two, uh, and that's fine. I happen to have had 194. I don't know why I ended up at 194, but I did. And it's listed on the lesson. And I say this jokingly, they're not all mine. Yeah, well, my friends said they were, but anyway, uh, the list is important because you're gonna read down this list of 194 character defects like I did today. And I'm like, uh-oh, <laughs> there, I think there are a few there that I really haven't dealt with, or there are a few there that, gosh, I can relate to that. I, I didn't realize that. There are character defects and things that we're, we're t- I have to read it. <laughs> I'm a visual guy. I've got to see it in front of me. And, and I did today. And it was eye-opening, really eye-opening, as I was putting this lesson together. So I hope it is for you, too. It's just a list. You may not have some. You may have, you may have some. But um, 
if we don't know, we don't know, right? In life, if we don't know, we don't know. And so it's important to know. It's important to be educated about you and I and about ourselves. It just, we just, we have to do that. And the Bible's very clear about that. Doing a searching, you know, search me, oh God. It's, we're asking that, search me, right? I don't want, you know, not you or you, but Lord, search me and help me and help me heal and help me, uh, you know, uh, identify, identify these defects that I've been carrying. So let's talk about this, uh, move into the lesson here, because, and again, it's uh, about removing our character defects. And principle five says voluntarily, voluntarily submit to every change God wants to make in my life and humbly ask him to remove my character defects. That's what the principle says. And it's based on the beatitude. Happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires, right? Happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. Not happy are those whose greatest desire is to please me, me, me. That got me in a ton of trouble, man. I want to, my desire is to please God and to do what God requires. And when you make the switch in your recovery, going from selfish me and it's all about me and I'm blaming, blaming everybody else, and you switch to doing what God desires for my life and for your life, man, big, big changes, big changes begin to happen. But this principle five is so important because it's, it's saying voluntarily submit to every change God wants to make. And, and that's voluntary, vo, you know, on a voluntary basis, you're making a choice. Do I or don't I? I am I'm on a voluntary basis. I'm going to submit. Okay, I'm going to do that. It's not saying you absolutely have to. It's not saying you must. I voluntarily submit to every change God wants to make in my life. And when you're able to do that, and when we're able to do that every single day as a part of our recovery, uh, things are we discover so there's self-awareness and how we can change so we're tonight we're going to be talking about the second part of that and that is removing the character defects you know what are they and how do we go about that step six says we were um and again the the steps and the principles are kind of parallel with one another uh we didn't go over step five because step five and step four they're essentially identical step six says we were entirely ready to have god remove these defects of character. We're entirely ready. When you've worked through the steps and the principles up to, up to principle five or six or in this, where we are now in this season, you're entirely ready. You've, you've, humility has entered in and pride has been stripped away. Humility enters in and you have a desire to get better. You have a, uh, like we talked about a few weeks ago, a desperation to get better. I wanna get better. I wanna improve. I wanna change. How do I do that? Well, James 4.10 says, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. So we can't, we're not coming before the Lord of coming, you know, in our recovery and saying, oh, I got this or I'm going to, it's all about me and I got the power to do this and I got the power to change. No, that's not how it works. We humbly go before the Lord because, uh, because he is worthy of that first of all, and we honor him and give him the glory in our tough times and in our good times and say, Lord, lift me up. I need to be lifted up. And therefore, here, what are your desires for my life, Lord? What are your desires? And if you remain down and continue to remain down, it may be, it may be time. It may be time to humble ourselves, repent, and come before him and say, Lord, I need to be lifted up for a change. I'm tired of being down. And that's where, that's where we get to the point where you're ready to change when the pain in your life is greater than your fear of changing, okay? That's the only time we're going to be able to change in our life, when the pain is greater than the fear. And over the last 20, now 21 years, we're in our 21st year, Celebrate Recovery, people come in the door because the pain in their life is greater than their fear. It takes a lot of courage to walk in the door of a recovery ministry. But they, but um, I would say quite a few majority of the people that come and join us at Celebrate Recovery got into the place where I can't do this anymore alone and I need help and I'm no longer afraid. And that's a great place to be. Cool. All right. So let's talk about where these character defects come from. And um, you'll be happy to know or not surprised, but they come from mom and dad. 
guess what? Mom and dad had chromosomes, both, they were both matched and boom, we received them. And dear old mom and dad, <clears throat> I know I thought my parents were perfect until a certain age and I'm realizing, okay, well that, that didn't work out that well. Anyway, but mom and dad uh, contributed to our character defects. Um, isn't that great? So mom and dad, in their own experiences from their youth all the way through adult life till they gave birth to you and I and, and what have you, um, you know, they had some stuff going on in their life. Now, a lot of times we didn't know anything about it. Maybe you grew up in a family where nothing was talked about around the dinner table or all you saw was anger. All you saw was frustration. All you saw was isolation, abandonment, betrayal around the dinner, dinner table. It happened to a lot of us, happened to a lot of us, but mom and uh, our defects, uh, you know, we, we got them from mom and dad. They contributed uh, the physical and the emotional, you know, the physical and the emotional character defects and what have you. And this explains, uh, and this is the kicker. It explains how we approached life issues growing up. It explains that, but it's not, but it doesn't excuse our sin. Okay. Just because mom and dad, or just because we inherited some of these, and just because we took them on and we witnessed them and we observed them, these defects, and we took them on as our own, right? Uh, it doesn't excuse sin. Sin is sin. Just because they passed them along doesn't mean we have to utilize them and act out in a way that is wrong totally opposite of God's purpose for our life, you see? So a lot of us blamed, hey, I was one of them, blamed our parents for a lot of different stuff, man, until I took responsibility and realized I had to make the decision to do that, make those stupid decisions and 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 uh, latch on and use those defects. That was my deal. That was nobody else's deal. The second place we get them is circumstances, circumstances in our life. Think of how we were raised. Think of that environment where we were raised and all the different circumstances we um, experienced. We learn from our parents who we received them from. We learn from others who we observe, right? We learned how to respond to pain and guilt and shame and abandonment and betrayal. We learned, those were learned defects that we, how we responded. Okay. Uh, and again, they're very related to coping mechanisms and coping skills. All right. Now they're, they're similar, but they're also vastly different. Okay. We didn't, we didn't inherit the uh, coping mechanisms. We learned how to embrace them and use them to hide the pain, the shame, the hurt, and the guilt as little kids in our youth and into our adult life. And once we're into our adult life, if we haven't shifted from what, uh, from what the Lord offers as far as healing pain, healing shame, healing restoration, giving us the power and the strength to be able to do it, and we're still relying on the coping mechanisms that we've had since we were young, then that's why the cycle of dysfunction continues in our life. The cycle of frustration continues in our life, and that's where it has to be, boom, set free from these defects and coping mechanisms, okay? So we learned them. There were circumstances in our life that we experienced and no one taught us, hey, try this defect. Hey, what about that defect or this? They were just inherent. We just learned them. They were, you know, they were there and we observed and went, oh, well, I see how they're handling that. Well, I'm going to handle that. If you had a dad that was a rageaholic or a mother who was totally withdrawn and an enabler and he had the hero in the family and, all, you know, the family uh, uh, dynamics, you learn from all those circumstances. You just did. And you carried them on into your life, in your adult life. And uh, the good news is the Lord can set us free from this. He can, and he will, and he has, and he'll continue to do that. Thirdly, where do our character defects come from? Uh, our choices, okay? Uh, here's the deal. Here's the thing about character defects. It's very similar to addiction in developing a habit. When you have... Um, uh, uh, character defects and you're and you're choosing you're making a choice a choice a choice over and over and over again using that defect or embracing that defect it's the same as creating a habit and you've created it you've created it over and over and over again and unknowingly 
okay, unknowingly. It's not like you made a list. Again, I gave you 194, but it's not like you made a list of your defects and said, oh, I'm going to I'm going to choose that one over and over and over and over and over again. You did it unknowingly. It was just natural. Why? Because of the parents, what we got, others, circumstances, and then choices. We just started making choices. So it became a habit over and over and over again. And these character defects just we're part of our being. They're part of our nature. They're part of our approach to everything we were doing in our life. And what you thought was probably, uh, because we didn't know any better or I didn't know any better, you're in an environment where you're totally inhibited and totally restrained and to you know paralyzed by your uh, circumstances or whatever. We didn't know any better, right? Until Jesus entered in. Oh, boy. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> oh boy, the healer came in to set us free. And that's exactly what the decision we have to make in our recovery, right? That's the decision we have to make. All these character defects, man, the, I, I don't, what are they? What are they doing in my life? I don't want them anymore. I do not want to utilize them anymore. I'm no longer in the third, the third point I was making, my choices. My choice is to do what God desires for me and dealing with pain, hurt, uh, shame, guilt. I want what he desires. I don't want what I desire anymore because I learned it. I observed it. I don't want that anymore in my life. I want a new, I want a new healthy life cycle with Jesus Lord over my desires to change and not follow the old way. How about you? Are we going to agree tonight? Agree? No more, uh, we're going we're gonna to discover what these defects are. And we talk that over with our sponsor, accountability partners. If you're new to this, we can talk about it. I'm available. Our leaders are available. We, we've done this. We've worked on this. And we're continuing. We're not, lead, we're not, hey, we're leaders in Celebrate Recovery. And we're part of a leader team of Celebrate Recovery. <laughs> we're by far not perfect at all. We're continuing to work it, man. And it's, it's a journey, the best journey I've ever been on in my life, man. Best journey. When Pastor Dale asked me to start this ministry, March of 1999, best decision I've ever, other than, uh, De other than Jesus, my wife Debbie, and Pastor Dale, and I said yes to Pastor Dale, three awesome decisions I've ever made in my life. Any more? Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Having kids, yeah, that was a good one. Three great sons. But I'll tell you what, I mean, oh, we're, we're working it, man. We work it every single week at Celebrate Recovery. Anyway, I'm going to get off track here, reel it back in. Uh, so that's where our character defects come from. Parents, circumstances, and choices. Oh, there are others, but I didn't have enough paper. Number two, why is it so hard? Why is it so hard to get rid of these character defects? I mean, it's so simple, right? But just because you said, Jesus, come in and take over my life and be Lord over my recovery, be my higher power over my recovery, that was the first day. That was the starting place. And I wish, I wish that he could have taken all 194 character defects and wiped, wiped them away. But here's the deal. Uh, it takes effort. Um, we can't wipe away what we don't first expose. Everything has been in the dark for all these years. We've got to bring it into light. Who's the light? Jesus. He sheds light on all that. And it's our responsibility to know exactly, to learn about ourselves, to learn about ourselves. One of the most important thing you can do is find out about you, you, right? My struggles, my pain, my shame, my defensiveness, my anger, my approach, my attitude. Why? What? How do I? What do I do? The best thing you can do is to get with the Lord and find and others that you trust. And that's part of the Celebrate Recovery and Church of the Redeemer to help you and guide you in this way. Learn about yourself. Now, the other thing I haven't mentioned in this is blind spots. Okay. Those are character defects as well. We don't even know, we don't even know what they are, our blind spots. But that's where others who love us unconditionally, who accept us for who we are, because the Bible tells us to, we're to love one another, right? We're to keep encouraging each other. And that's part of recovery. 
people in our life that recovers, that, re that helps us recover, and they see the blind spots. They observe, and they can gently, um, with grace, tell you, hey, I just observed some things in your life, and I don't know if you're aware of this or not. You know, and it's uh, either an approach, an attitude, or something, or a word you said, or or anything. That's not in, being intrusive. We don't have people in our church or people in Celebrate Recovery that are just seeking someone. No, it's not what it's all about. We don't. First of all, we don't allow it, and secondly, it's not healthy. But you find people you trust, man, and they're the ones that are going to help us get rid of these character defects. Okay. But why is it so hard? Well, the answer is, like I said earlier, where'd we get them? Well, we've had them all our life. We've had these things all of our life. And I was going through that list of 194 that are on this teaching sheet. And you'll go through that too, I hope. And look at these and go, I had no idea. I had no idea. There's some things here that I, I, I am struggling with that I didn't have any clue. Well, that's where the Holy Spirit enters in and he, start, and he helps you sift through you, helps you sift through all the, all the, all the uh, resentments and the hurts and everything else to help you identify the catalyst and the root where these defects and where they're coming from. But we've had them all our life. They don't just, just, they don't just appear, right? It's not like they, boom, you know, we have all these defects all of a sudden. Learned, they are learned, observed, brought into our life, used, utilized, based on our parents, family environment, others, circumstances, choices. They're there. They, they don't just boom. We don't just, hey, you got 100, you got 75, you got 70, you know, they're there. They don't just appear. They are there in our life and they've been, they're learned habits, learned practices. Uh, but we develop them, we nurture them, and we became so used to them, as I kind of mentioned earlier, you know, because they're just there and we, we're, we're, we're using them, not even un, uh, sometimes unknowingly, but they're woven into the fabric of our life. They're woven into our approach, our attitude, our relationships and everything and how we dealt with everything. They were just there and they're very hard to let go because they work. They're, they worked and they were really, really hard to let go. But I'll tell you something that works even better. And that is a relationship with the Lord because he's the only one that can fix you, fix me, change you, change me, heal me and heal you. He's the only one that's able to do that. He's the only one. Um, and they're hard to let go because, you know, they, they worked but they were dysfunctional. They caused us hurt. They caused us uh, to continue in that dysfunctional cycle in our life until we're finally set free of them. And then our path is illuminated by a beacon of hope that the Lord is putting before us on this road of recovery. You see, they, they did work, but they, they weren't healthy. And the whole point of character defects, especially going through our inventory, is to get rid of them acknowledge them, identify them, and throw them away, okay? And the Lord and our support team, our sponsor, your accountability team, together, it's a team effort, can help us and help you and I do that. That's what it's all about. Uh, why is it so hard? Because we, we accept them. We confuse, here we, are, here we are back to identity. We confuse our identity with our character defects, right? Have you ever, does this phrase ring a bell in any relationship you've ever had or you maybe you have now? Oh, that's just the way I am. Can anybody ring, can anybody relate to that phrase that, oh, that's just the way I am or, oh, that's just the way he is, you know, the enabler. Oh, that's just the way my husband is you know, or that's the way she is, or that's the way they are, or, but that's the way, but I'm, we're talking about you and me, no one else right now. Oh, that's just the way I am. Well, why is it so hard to change just the way I am? Fear. We're afraid because the defects have protected us, although unhealthy, the defects have protected us from a lot of stuff, right? And our choices got us into situations and relationships and really, really bad stuff. And it's the only thing we knew. Matter of fact, 
uh, turmoil, turmoil in our life or trying to manipulate relationships. We used to feed on that, trying to lie, cheat, and steal. Those are part of our defective, unhealthy lifestyle. And why, why couldn't we change? Well, we were afraid, afraid to change. We didn't know what was on the other side. We had no clue what, what was on the other side if I changed. But the Lord does because he had our path already set, our destiny set out for you and I already. He already has it set out for us, right? There should be, and there is no fear in the Lord, right? There is no fear in the Lord. And when you switch off, when you're in your recovery, work in your steps and work on your principles, and you're just, you're digging down deep, you're pulling back the layers. Um, over time, that fear subsides, that fear is stripped away along with the shame, the guilt, the pain, and the hurt. It's all together taken away to where to give you humility and also a under, better understanding of yourself. And all of a sudden you're looking around going, wow, I did it. I've been able to do this for the first time in my life. And the difference was it wasn't your desires and how to deal with your defects and make them work for you. It was the Lord's desire. desire you, want, you desire to do what the Lord wants for your life. That's the whole point about Celebrate Recovery. It's going from a place of pain, hurt, shame, guilt, destruction, turmoil, to a place of peace, understanding, healing, and restoration. And we do that now every week at all of our, at Clarksburg, Frederick, and Gaithersburg. Amen? And here, now live for the time being. Lastly, uh, character defects, I kind of alluded to it. They worked well. Yeah. Why is it so hard to get rid of them? Because they work they work well you know they really do and again it's not that we're making a list and going oh that worked real well oh good i'll, I'll keep using that one or let's see this one here eh, it's not working that good here let's get rid of that one um oh yeah that works really really well gosh i'm gonna you know what i'm gonna work on i'm gonna use that one a lot because that one really really helps me this one here <coughs> only part of the time yeah i put that up but they work well. They mask here, 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 we're wrapping this up now. They mask defects, character. Defects. They mask the pain. They mask the guilt. They mask the shame. They get me attention from others in an unhealthy way. Sympathy, pity. That's what character defects. Uh, it attracts others to want to come in and fix you, help you, change you, control you, and you, you're you kind of, you know, I kind of like that, right? Why do I want to get rid of these? Why do I want to, I'm masking all the pain, I'm masking all the shame, why do I need, but we set ourselves up for continued failure, <coughs> excuse me, we set ourselves up for continued, for the, the dysfunctional life, and here's the kicker, uh, and I, again, I've been around church with for 24 years and people come in and these dysfunctional lifestyles and total turmoil, dysfunctional lifestyle, you know, emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually. And that, that, you know, that cycle just continues and just continues and they're dying and they're desperate for a break and they're desperate like I was years ago to be changed and to get well. And I was always setting myself up for failure. When we're, when we're counting on these character defects to mask everything, we are setting ourselves up for failure. Until we realize that the healer, the healer in our recovery is the one that's going to break that cycle once and for all. That cycle, that dysfunctional life cycle that you've been on, that's been spinning out of control in your marriage, in your relationships, in your finances, in your addiction. You, you're, trying to, you're, you're trying to get a grasp of why is this continuing in my life? Well, it's probably one of the many 194 character defects on this list that you're using to cover everything, to mask everything. You're isolating from everyone. You're just wanting to hide. You just want to go away. You want it to go away, but it's not going to go away because it won't go away if you say it's not there. When you put your head on the pillow, you still think about it. When you wake up in the morning, it's the first thing you think about. You're reminded of it as soon as you get out of bed and start your day. And then all throughout the day, you these defects keep, you know, keep hounding 
hounding you and hounding you and hounding you until you get to the place in your life where the pain is greater than your, what do we talk, why do we, why was it hard, so hard to get rid of them? Fear. The pain is greater than your fear. Bam. Guess what? That's the place where you say, Lord, I can't take it anymore. Jesus, I, you know, I've heard about you. I've, I've heard messages. I've heard others in recovery, but I, I just can't take it anymore. I, 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 my life at step one is so unmanageable right now. And he'll come in and he'll, if you ask him, say, Jesus, come into my life, come in and take over my life and heal me, restore me, be my Lord and savior. I know you're the son of God. I know you're the son of God. You died for me. I've heard that. I know that. Now come in and take over my life. Come in my heart. Change my life. He then, right then and there, will break that cycle. Right then and there, the Holy Spirit and his love, his grace, his mercy will break that. Start either will break it. It depends. We're all different. It will either break immediately or it's going to break in subsequent days following that, if you're doing the right thing with the right people in the right church, in the right support, with the right accountability, with the right recovery, with the right program, and that's Celebrate Recovery at Church of the Redeemer, okay? Now, here's a saying that is, uh, it's pretty cool. I actually, I put it, in the, yeah, put it in the comment section or in the post. Character defects are always on the psychological back burner in our life. They're always on the psychological back burner. Recovery just stops them from catching everything on fire. Man, I love that quote. I don't know who said it. I'll steal it. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Isn't that awesome? Character defects are always on the psychological back burner, but recovery just stops them from catching everything on fire. And that's true. When you're in recovery, when you're in christ Center recovery, where you're in Celebrate Recovery, all of a sudden, all the fires start going out in your life because you've worked it. You're working it, right? All those, all those defects, they're on the back burner. They're on the back burner. You don't want them anymore. You don't want them. And recovery gets you to a place where they're not affecting everything in your life and setting everything they continue to set everything on fire let's put the fire out man let's call on the fire the tongues of fire that the lord that in the upper room jesus sent because the holy spirit came in and then bam changed everybody in that room and changed me years ago can change you as well and take your recovery to a new relationship with the lord to an entirely new level in your life you want that if you want that bad enough you'll do it you will do it. You'll ask him to take over and be your higher power and break that unhealthy, um, full of character defect life, life cycle in your life, dysfunctional life cycle. Um, we'll close with this, Romans 12, 2. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, okay? Don't copy the behaviors, the defects, the character defects that you inherited, observed, and made choices of years and year for years and years and years. But, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. It all starts here and here and they're both equally yoked and and totally uh equally beneficial and they're totally uh, your heart and mind will change if you so choose if you choose to do that and you want to change the way you're thinking by not relying on these old character defects but relying on god and allowing him to transform you form your life and make you into a new person. Isn't that what we all want? Truly, isn't that what we all want? No matter where you are in your relationship, no matter where you are in your life, no matter where you are in your relationship with the Lord, you should always want to be a new person every single day, every single gift of a day. And Celebrate Recovery can help you do that at Church of the Redeemer. And our church overall 
can help you do that as well. Are you ready to do that? Ready to make some changes? Okay, if you are and need prayer and you need some assistance and support and want to be a part of one of our sharing groups, please reach out. Direct messages here on the Facebook page or celebrate recovery at church redeemer.org. That's our email address celebrate recovery at church redeemer.org. All right, amen. Well, let's pray. Lord, thank you so much, Lord, for just uh, just a better understanding of the character defects that we inherited, character defects that we are uh, based on circumstances and character defects based on our choices that we've made all from our youth to our young adult life, Lord, to uh, our adult life now. Father God, you uh, want nothing more for each, of, each and every one of us to have a life of peace and understanding, Lord. Uh, uh, for for six, us to be successful. Your word says, Lord, that if we follow the laws of Moses, Lord, that you would make us successful in whatever we do. And that's what we want. We want that unhealthy lifestyle, life cycle, Lord, that dysfunctional life cycle that we are depending on based on our character defects to be broken once and for all. But you're the one that's going to do it, Lord. You're the only one that can do that and start that break that in our life. And we pray for each and every person, Lord, that uh, that views this, that's a part of our uh, time uh, tonight, Lord Jesus, anyone that needs you in a great way to break that cycle, I pray in Jesus' name that you'll reach out, you'll speak up, you'll speak out to the Lord and ask him to do that in your life. And whatever other issues are going on in your life, Lord, we just plead the blood of Christ over every single one of us for an abundance of the Lord's blessings in every every area of our life, Lord. We need you, Lord. We depend on you. You're the guide. You're the one, the higher power for each and every one of us. And we love you, Lord, for all you do in our life. We give you the honor and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I really hope that my message was an encouragement to you. Okay, I really, truly do. Now, to get a copy of my book, Stop Hiding, Start Healing, one of two ways. You can go to my website, stophidingstarthealingbook.com, stophidingstarthealingbook.com, or you can go directly to Amazon and in the search bar, put in Craig Brown, Stop Hiding, Start Healing. Okay, if you want to reach out to me, you can send me a direct message on our Facebook page. Stop Hiding, Start Healing on Facebook. Stop Hiding, Start Healing. I hope, I hope we'll all be able to do that very soon. Stop Hiding, Start Healing. Enjoy my book. Thank you for tuning in. Talk to you next time.